Lightroom is an amazing piece of software, but it's fair to say that some of its best features are hidden from plain sight. So if you're looking to up your Lightroom game, you've definitely picked the right video, because today I'm gonna to share with you 20 hidden Lightroom techniques that every photographer should learn. These tips and tricks will help you streamline your editing process and enhance your photos. So whether you're a beginner or a pro, I'm sure you'll find something useful in this video. So I've broke this video down into two sections. The first based around improving your editing speed with shortcuts. The second being 10 amazing hidden features that will improve any photo. Now by using these two sections together, your editing speed will improve and you will unlock new techniques that will transform your photos. So let's get straight into it because there's tons of good stuff to get through in this week's video. So I'm using a PC. If you're on a Mac, there's gonna be a couple of differences in terms of the keys that I press. So when I'm using control, I think it's command on a Mac. And if I'm using alt, I think that's option on a Mac. So just bear that in mind. And I'm just gonna say the PC versions, otherwise it's gonna get a bit complicated, but just bear that in mind if you're a Mac user. So first up, is, and you might be aware of these tools here in the histogram, is the shadow and highlight clipping warning uh, buttons. You can click these on and off, and it will show you if you've got any shadows or highlights clipped in your image. As you can see down here on the left, I've got these blue speckles, that means I've got shadows clipping. But instead of clicking on these separately and turning them on and off, which I do quite a lot, if you just simply hit J on the keyboard, that turns them on and off. So you can toggle them on and off super quick, super easy. Save you having to go up and turn them on and off manually with your mouse. So yeah, that's J on the keyboard. So moving on to tip number two, we're gonna be using the Alt key to show us the tonal range of the image. Now, if you hold down Alt and move these sliders, we'll see how the tonal range of the image changes. So here you can just see little specks of black and that means we've got pure black. The further I bring the slider down, you'll see more pure black coming into the image. This works the same with the highlights as well. So the further I move the highlight slider to the right, the more we can see pure white coming into the image. A quick way of comparing your edited image to your original RAW file is by simply pressing Y on the keyboard and that brings up this comparison view here so we can see our edited version and our non-edited version. And this is a great way of seeing if you're over editing your images. Sometimes if you go too far with an image, just by looking at the RAW file, you can see that you've made some crazy wacky adjustments and it's a great way of just keeping your editing in check. A great shortcut to use and one that I use all the time is when we've got the crop tool selected. So if I select the crop tool, if I press O on the keyboard, it allows us to toggle through a series of overlays. And this can really be quite useful for cropping an image, especially if you want to use, say, the golden ratio, this is a great example of, of the golden ratio here, how we've got this swooping effect through the image. So yeah, it can be really helpful for aiding your composition when you're cropping your images. If we go to the basics tab, you can see we've got color here and black and white here. That's changing our treatment, so we can toggle between color and black and white. But we can also do this by hitting V on the keyboard. That is a quick way of doing it. And this is great if we're looking through our images and we're not sure whether it might work well in color or black and white, as we're scrolling through the film strip at the bottom, you can simply hit V and see what it looks like in black and white, move on to the next image, see what that looks like in black and white, and so on. This is a great way of deciding what you might wanna do with your edit when you're just cycling through your images. Tip number six is T for toolbar. Now this little gray section here where there's not a lot in it, takes up valuable real estate in our editing screen. If we hit T, we can simply get rid of that. And that's great because it allows us to see our editing photograph bigger. Basically, we get to see more of it. And if you want to uh, bring the toolbar back up again, you just press T. Tip number seven is a really quick and simple one. Basically, if we do an edit up here, we'll adjust the exposure and we don't like it. If we press Ctrl and Z on the keyboard, that's gonna undo that edit. If we press Ctrl and Y on the keyboard, it's gonna redo that edit. This is a great way and saves you so much time because otherwise you have to come all the way up to the edit button to click undo. Another great tip for fine tuning your edits is if you hold down shift, whilst using these sliders. And what that'll do, it'll give you greater control. The increments in which the slider's moved is slowed down considerably. So if I take my finger off shift, you can see how quickly now I move the exposure sliders. It's holding down shift, 
just allows me to really fine tune the changes in small increments, yeah, shift and move the sliders. So shortcut number nine is zooming in and out of our image. It's simple to do, just press control on the keyboard and plus to zoom in, control and minus to zoom out. Now, if we want to have a little bit more control and see exactly where we're zooming into, if we hold down control, you see the magnifying glass there, it's got a little square, a dotted square around it. We can now click our left mouse button and drag a square and that's going to zoom into that area of the image and I use that all of the time. So shortcut number 10 when we've finished editing our photo and we want to export it instead of coming up here clicking file and export just simply press ctrl shift and e and that will bring our export module up. Now this is a super quick way of bringing it up and it saves us having to come up to the top here every time. Just a quick bonus shortcut as well. If you press L on your keyboard, it turns the lights out and this is a great way of taking a look at your photo in more detail without having the distractions and the clutter of all of your editing tools. I use this a lot actually, it's great. And we'll also come back to this a little bit later. I've got another tip lined up for the lights out tool. So the first hidden tip I'd like to give you is a fairly basic one, but it really does speed up your workflow in terms of moving around the editing panel on the right hand side. Typically we've got, you know, we can open and close our particular tools if you like. So the tone curve, the HSL, we can open and close it. If we've got a lot open, it means we've got to scroll down to the bottom to get to the next panel or the panel that we want to use. But if you right click on this dark gray area here, we've got a few options. And I like to use solo mode. And what that means is we've only got one tool open at a time. So if I click off tone curve, we can see none are selected. If I click on the basics tab, it'll open just that tab. If I click on tone curve next, it'll close the basics tab and open the tone curves. The same as I open HSL, it will close the tone curve and open the HSL. Now this keeps everything really clean and tidy and it makes your process a lot easier because you can quickly see exactly where all your tools are and where you want to go to next. So next let's take a look at the crop tool and the hidden tools within the crop tool and these are great. So you can either select the crop tool here or press R on the keyboard to bring up your crop. Now firstly, normally what we do is resize our crop, wouldn't we? maybe grab a few different corners, move it around, and then maybe we're happy, we press the crop tool and we've cropped our image. But there is an easier way of doing it. If we hold down the Alt key while we're dragging, instead of having to drag individual corners, it brings that crop into the center for us. And I found this a lot easier. It takes a lot less clicks to get to where you need to go. So yeah, just literally hold down your Alt key and it will drag into the center as opposed to the corner. That's a great way of doing it. Let's reset that crop mode. Next is the level. Uh, typically, if you come up to the panel here, you've got your level or straighten tool, but there is a shortcut for that. You can press control on the keyboard and it automatically brings it up and then you can drag your level out. Saves having to go up here and select it. Next, obviously we spoke about this before, but if you press O on the keyboard, you can toggle between your overlays. The next feature is completely hidden and this is a fantastic little feature. If you hold down L like we mentioned before, it turns the lights off on your computer, hiding all the distractions. But when you're in the crop tool, it allows you to really focus in on your crop. Look at that, that lights out feature follows the crop tool. And this allows us to fine tune our composition and really see the composition, the crop better hides all those distractions. I think this is a brilliant feature. So just hit L to turn the lights off and let's reset our crop. Sometimes with an edit, it's difficult to know where to start, isn't it? But a good starting point is with your white and black points. Now we can typically do this with the black slider here and the white slider there. We could just bring them out until we've got some white hitting the edge of the histogram and some blacks hitting the edge of the histogram. Sometimes though, or it might be difficult to figure this out, or you might not be sure, or if you're just new to editing, a great way of maybe learning actually about your image is just by hitting shift on your keyboard and double clicking on blacks and it will set, it automatically set the black point for you. You can also do the same with white. So uh, press shift on whites and double click and it will move the white point for you. And this is what Lightroom thinks is uh, a good starting point for your image. And obviously you can fine tune it from there if you wish. So let's select another image. Let's select this one of the 
Peak District, shot in the Peak District. Now I'm going to come to the tone curve for this. Now you might have noticed this little button here, this target, this allows us to target specific tones within our image. So if we click on the target, say with the tone curve we want to brighten this section of sky here because it's a little bit too dull. What we can do is we can pin a selection to the tone curve. So I'm going to pin a, a pin here in the dark section, maybe some here in the heather, maybe some here as well, and some up here. And that's putting a selection of targets on the tone curve. And now I can come over to the area of the sky, what I want to brighten. Now, if I press my left mouse button and move the mouse up or down, it's going to move that specific part of the tone curve, which is affecting those tones only. And because I put all of those other pins on the tone curve, you can see it's not really affecting any of those tones. It's just affecting that portion of the sky. So this allows us to be really, uh, you know, selective with how we manipulate tones within the, the tone curve, basically. Yeah, so I can either brighten or darken that section of the sky. So I think I might want to just push that up to about there somewhere. And uh, if I toggle that on and off, you can see what we've done. We've just really affected the very brightest parts of the image. Maybe some of the highlights down in the foreground as well, which actually is quite nice. So yeah, that's a great way of doing it. And this also works well in the HSL panel as well. And you can see these little targets here. So if I was to, you can see I've already made some adjustments to this image, but if I was to click on that, we hold down um, our left mouse button and drag again. You can see that if I've dragged the mouse down, it's reducing the blues. If I drag it up, it's reducing the it's increasing the saturation of the blues. So yeah, these little targets are great for targeting specific parts of the image. So I'm going to stay on this Peak District shot just for a minute because this is one of my favorite hidden tools within Lightroom. So I'm just going to reset, because this is an edited image, I'm just going to reset it to its original raw file format. And I'm going to work on the sky in this image. And you can see it's quite washed out. There isn't a huge amount of saturation in it. So what I'm going to do is come up to the masking feature here, click on sky, and that's going to create a mask based on the sky only. So it's going to select just the sky. Now you can see we've got our orange overlay here showing us what is targeted within this mask. You can also see it here with the, the white selection. If I press O on the keyboard, that gets rid of the overlay. So toggles that on and off. The mask's still there though. Now, if we if we make an adjustment here with the exposure, we can bring the exposure down, maybe increase the saturation. What we tend to see is that it looks a little bit unnatural because it's applying all of those settings to all of the sky. And that's not really how we see the sky. Typically we see the sky darker at the top, lighter at the bottom, quite often anyway, and certainly for a blue sky. So what we're going to do is come up to these little three dots just here, click on that, and then we're going to take this section here, intersect mask with. Then we can choose what we want to intersect the mask with. So we can use another brush against the mask we've already used. So for this, I'm going to use the linear gradient tool. So that is going to bring up the linear gradient tool. I can now drag the linear gradient tool over my original mask, which is masking out the rocks and the rest of the land. And as you can see, that makes that mask a lot more natural because we've got that beautiful graduation now from the top of the sky down to the horizon line. So the intersect mask is such a valuable tool. I, I use this all of the time. I mean, it's only you know within the last year or so become available, but it's such a fantastic hidden tool. And you can use it with the brush tool, the radial filter. You can combine multiple tools. It's just brilliant. Just explore with it, experiment with it. And yeah, it will take your photography to the next level because it is such a valuable tool. So next up, we're gonna sharpen this image. So we're gonna come down to the sharpening tab which is detail, and we're going to talk about masking. Now, masking is something that's very important when you're sharpening an image. So for this shot here, obviously we want to sharpen the heather and these rocks, but we really don't want to sharpen the sky. If we sharpen the pixels in the sky, we're just really introducing noise where we don't really need it to be. So if we hold down Alt on the keyboard and drag the masking slider, we can then see exactly what we're sharpening. And this is a super valuable tool. 
because everything that's black is not being sharpened. Everything that's white is being sharpened. So as we move the masking slider to the right, less and less of the image is being affected by the sharpening. So this allows us to be really selective about where we apply the sharpening. So I don't want to introduce any sharpening into the sky. So from here, you can just about see a bit of sharpening appearing in the clouds. So I'm just going to reduce that a little bit somewhere there. And now I can adjust my sharpening slider as required, just to sharpen the areas that I need to sharpen. So my next tip is adding a vignette. Now, obviously it's pretty easy, isn't it? We just come down to the effects tab here and then we can add in a vignette if we want to. Now, I never ever use the vignette tool. It just doesn't give me enough control. So what I tend to do is come up to my mask and I will create a new mask and I'll select the radial gradient tool and then I'll drag that out to where I need it to be. Invert it and as you can see from the orange overlay now that is where we'll be applying our edits to. So I'm going to press O on the keyboard just to get rid of the overlay so we can see what we're doing. And now I can use all of the sliders to create my vignette. So if I wanted to drop the exposure right down, like I'm not going to do that, but if I wanted to drop my exposure right down, I could do. But I can also, you know, be quite selective in terms of, you know, what tones I reduce as well. So if it was just the shadows I wanted to, to bring down, I could do. If it was just the blacks I wanted to bring down, you know, so I can be really selective. Plus I can move it around if I want to as well. And what I could do is intersect it. So I could come back up to the intersect button and choose, say, a brush. And then if I brushed over just the bottom part of the image, it would just apply the vignette to the bottom part of the image. So if I press my overlay now, it's just applying it to the bottom two corners. So you can be really, really selective about where it is that you actually paint that vignette into your image. So yeah highly recommend doing your vignettes with the radial filter. Now let's move to a different image. Let's take a look at this long exposure waterfall shot, which was shot in the Brecon beacons. So when we're taking a look at our image, quite often we want to increase the midtones in the image. Now, one of the problems with the basics tab here, there isn't really anywhere that we can increase the midtones. You know, if we open the shadows up, it's it's affecting like all of the dark areas in the image. Same with, you know, in boosting the highlights, if you, if you like, it's, it's, you know, increasing the highlights, exposures increasing everything. So there isn't really a way of targeting just the mid-tones within the basics tab. To do that, really, you've got to go to the tone curve, but this is not a particularly great way of doing it. I found a really easy way of doing it actually, and that's coming down to the color grading panel, which is probably not somewhere you'd think to go to increase your midtones. But with each of these color wheels, there is a slider that targets either the shadows, highlights, or the midtones. So you can use this slider here to target your midtones. So you can introduce negative or positive exposure to just your midtones. So next up, we have the color calibration tool, which is hidden away at the bottom of the editing panel. This is an amazing tool and it's completely transformed my photography processing over the years. Now it is a little tricky to explain, but the way I see it is like this. Our photo is made of pixels, but each pixel consists of three sub pixels that correspond to three colors and they are red, green and blue. Now these subpixels are arranged in a specific pattern, a range in intensity from zero to maximum to give us the full range of colors on our monitor. It's a bit crazy, a bit mind blowing, but the calibration tool in Lightroom allows you to adjust the hue and saturation of the photo to ensure that you can get accurate colors. Now the tool works by allowing you to adjust these three colors individually by moving the sliders. Now unlike the saturation slider in the basics tab, which affects saturation of all of the pixels at once, the color calibration targets the red, green, and blue colors individually, meaning you can be more targeted with your adjustment. But remember, because each pixel has either red, green, or blue subpixels, these adjustments will have an impact on other colors too. Now, my most used slider is the blue saturation slider, and I use this to correct my greens. This is such a powerful tool. So this shot 
looking down this avenue of beech trees in early spring is beautiful but what you can see is the greens in this image look very washed out i mean this was a super vibrant scene looked incredible really lush but it looks really flat actually so what I tend to do is use the color calibration tool. For the majority of the time, it's the blue primary saturation slider which I'm using. So if I, if I just bring that up, you see how that makes those greens nice and lush again. It doesn't just add saturation to the greens, it seems to add luminance, contrast, and richness to the tones. I think it makes the world of difference. And quite often what I do is toggle between the uh, temperature slider and also the color calibration slider so you can see that there's probably quite a lot of magenta in this image as well so i'll just reduce the uh, the magenta down and then i'll come back down to my calibration and maybe just back off on the uh, blue primary saturation but that looks so much more realistic and lifelike to how it was when I was actually there. Let's just hit Y on the keyboard to bring up our before and after. And you can see what a huge impact that has had on those green tones. So, so let's just take a look at this image over here, which was shot in the Lake District. Now, this is looking really flat, isn't it? Really flat. And this was autumn. There's some beautiful golden colors down here. And it, it looks washed out in terms of its uh, blue hues. But if I, uh, if I just boost boost this up a bit it's it's boosting those blues but if i come up to the uh, the temperature and just boost that up a little bit as well maybe take out a few of those green colors because all this bracken is a lovely golden brown color come back down to my calibration and just just adjust that ever so slightly you can see just by playing with those two how we can take it from a really washed out bluish scene into this much more lifelike wonderful <laughs> golden scene which was how it was when we were there in the field so just play around with your color calibration and your temperature combine the two to get the right color balance it works so well so let's take a look at this next feature let's move over to this wonderful shot of castle on a lovely frosty misty morning now i only found out this little technique recently which is pretty cool always learning something new which is great in photography isn't it every week something new pops up that you never knew existed so let's come down to the transform tab now as you can see this image is slightly wedge shaped the top of the castle is leaning out to the right the top of this turret here is slightly leaning out to the left so the you know the perspective of it isn't quite right so we can straighten that up but a great tool to use is this little one here you can either press shift and t or you can just click on it. And then you can drag these lines down and that allows you, you need to do two, that allows you to straighten things up. Once you've done two, it'll automatically straighten it for you. So let's look at the before and after. As you can see, this turret on the right is a lot straighter. This one on the left is a lot straighter than this. I could probably go a little bit further with it, but you get the idea. If you need to go back to it, you just simply select the tool again and those markers are still there. You can drag these handles around just to refine the straightness of those verticals. So yeah, the upright tool is a cracking hidden tool down in the transform panel. If you'd like to learn more about my whole photography workflow from the shoot to the final print, why not check out this video that's here. Hope you found these Lightroom tips helpful and we'll start using them in your editing process. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up as that really helps me out. And why not consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. If you have any questions or maybe some suggestions for others, feel free to let me know in the comments. Take care and I'll see you next week.